so let's start off with talking about the goods market okay in the goods market in 207 we learned about the goods market in uh, if i remember correctly it was chapter three and in that what we learned is that consumers have basically one decision to make right what they decided was whether to save or to consume right they had income or let's call it disposable income from that they decided to save either they save the money or they consume the uh, now uh, because of openness this is fine saves is fine when they decide to consume they have another decision to make okay they have to decide whether they want to buy domestic goods or whether they want to buy foreign goods okay now here's the thing for some people it may matter like the the, the place where a good was manufactured but for most people for me for example when i go out to buy a good i don't really care about where the country was what where the country of origin is of a good what i care about is quality and price I'm going to, let's say I'm trying to decide between two goods. Uh, one was, let's say, manufactured in Bangladesh. One was manufactured in USA. I don't honestly care about where this was, where which good was produced. What I care about is which is the better product, uh, which product is uh, priced appropriately or rather priced uh, in a way that I like. So ultimately, what we have to look into is the price level. So when we talk about domestic and foreign, we have to look at the price level of two goods. And when we talk about price, we effectively comes down to having a discussion about nominal and real price. Because this is what matters, right? I give you two pen. I tell you this one pen was made in Bangladesh, this other pen was made in India, which one do you want? You don't really care. What you're going to ask me is what is the price of each of this pen? And I tell you this is 8 taka, this is 10 taka, same quality, let's say. You'll buy the one that's in India. You don't care if it's Indian or Bangladesh. So let's talk about price, okay? And since we're talking about two countries, what we are going to talk about is the exchange rate so let's start off with nominal exchange rate uh, we're going to denote that with a capital e for exchange rate uh, so the definition of exchange rate is fairly simple we all know this this is the value of domestic currency in terms of uh, foreign currency. Uh, now here's the thing, the reverse is also applicable. You may also define nominal exchange rate as the value of foreign currency in terms of domestic currency. Now these are both correct definitions. What is important is for you to be consistent. So when you're trying to solve a problem or you're trying to explain an answer, First, you have to define what you mean by nominal exchange rate. So either the first one or the second one, you have to first define what you're talking about, and then you have to be consistent, okay? So for the rest of the answer, when you mention nominal exchange rate, you have to mean that. Uh, so for example, uh, we can write uh, one US dollar is equal to 80 taka. It's not accurate, but we can write this. 
uh, from Bangladesh, this is the second definition, right? This is the value of a foreign currency in terms of domestic currency. The opposite is also true. We may write uh, one taka is equal to one by eighty dollar, or however much this comes to uh, zero point zero one two five, I think. Uh, 0 0.0125 or something like this. I may be wrong. Now, this is the second definition. This is the first definition. This is one. This is. Two. They're both correct. They're both giving us the exact same information, just are presented in a different way. All you need to do is be consistent, and that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, so the next thing that we need to talk about is fluctuation so suppose today one dollar is equal to 80 taka tomorrow one dollar is going to be equal to 82 taka and then the day after one dollar is equal to 81 taka you all know that exchange rate moves up and down right so what do we call them when domestic currency becomes stronger we call that i will use another ink we call that a nominal appreciation the price is appreciating. So example might be uh, today one dollar is equal to eighty taka, but then tomorrow one dollar is equal to seventy five taka. What this means is that taka has appreciated nominally has appreciated. Second of all, when domestic currency becomes weaker, that is called a nominal depreciation. And the example would be fairly straightforward. We start off with a point where one dollar is equal to eighty taka, but then the next day one dollar is equal to eighty-five taka. So what this means is that taka has depreciated nominally. Of course, remember we're talking about nominal exchange rates here. Now, another thing you guys should keep in mind is that we are talking about something called a floating exchange rate, okay? Uh, let's write this down. By floating, what I mean is that the value of, let's say, dollar and taka is allowed to fluctuate. It goes up, it goes down, it's freely moving up or down. But sometimes, two countries may come together and decide that they're going to hold the exchange rate between their countries fixed. So if Bangladesh and India comes and decide that one rupee uh, will be equal to let's say 1.5 taka and we're going to hold this uh, level fixed, then that will be an example. It's unlikely that we will ever do that, but that will be an example of something called a fixed exchange rate. In this case, market forces are not going to cause these fluctuations in price level. The rate is going to be held fixed. Now, of course, fixed exchange rate doesn't mean that it will always be fixed. The two governments might come together and uh, decide that the rate has to be changed. Like we've held a fixed level for a number of years, but now we need to change it a little. If that happens, instead of appreciation and depreciation, what we call is revaluation. 
and devaluation. This is revaluation is of course uh, the counterpart of appreciation and devaluation is part of depreciation. So for fixed exchange rates, we have nominal appreciation and nominal depreciation uh, for floating exchange rate. And for fixed exchange rate, we have nominal revaluation and nominal devaluation. 